mismo le David. Adonai roi lo exar. Bino te she yarbit seni. An me menu chot ya nachaleni. Nafshi yishovei. Ya nachini v'magle tzedek l'ma'an shemo. Gam ki helech v'geitz al mavet. Lo irarai ki atai madi. Shiftecha u'mishan techa. Em ayinach amuni. Taroch lefanai shulchan. Neged surirai Vishanta vashamen roshi Kosiri vayav Ach tov chesed yudifuni Ko yame chayai Vishaviti Vivet Aronai Le Orech Yami. Friends, I've chanted for you the words of our 23rd Psalm. The 23rd Psalm is one that we turn to when we are seeking comfort and solace. It is the psalm we turn to when we are in need of strength and guidance. And so I ask you now to recite these words with me. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He guideth me in straight paths for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou hast anointed my, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. In the rising of the sun and in its going down, we will remember her. In the blowing of the wind and in the chill of winter, we will remember her. In the opening buds and in the rebirth of spring, we will remember her. In the blueness of sky and in the warmth of summer, we will remember her. In the rustling of leaves and in the beauty of autumn, we will remember her. In the beginning of the year and when it ends, we will remember her. When we are weary, and in need of strength, we will remember her. And when we are lost and sick at heart, we will remember her. When we have joys we yearn to share, we will remember her. So long as we live, she too will live, for she is now a part of us, as we remember Edith Silverman. To her grandchildren, to Amy and Michael, also to Nick and Kara, to her great-grandchildren, Madison, Maley, and Samuel, Caleb, Mason, and Mackenzie, to all of the members of the family and so many dear and cherished friends, we have gathered together today to remember, but also to celebrate the life of your beloved Edith. Our sages have taught us that birth is a beginning and death a destination, and life is a journey from childhood to maturity and from youth to age, from innocence to awareness and ignorance to knowing, from foolishness to discretion and then perhaps to wisdom, from weakness to strength or strength to weakness and often back again, from health to sickness, and back we pray to health again. From offense to forgiveness and from loneliness to love, from joy to gratitude, from pain to compassion, 
and grief to understanding, from fear to faith, from defeat to defeat to defeat, until looking backward or ahead, we see that victory lies not at some high place along the way, but in having made the journey, stage by stage, a sacred pilgrimage. Birth is a beginning and death a destination, and life is a journey, a sacred pilgrimage to life everlasting. She was known by many names. Perhaps you knew her by Edith, or Edel, or Mom, or Aunt, or Grammy. Whatever name you knew her by, you knew from the moment you met her that she was a remarkable woman. Edith's journey began in New York City. She was born in 1922 to her Ukrainian immigrant parents, Samuel and Molly Fried Feldman. Her parents came from a little shtetl known as Kovel, and they made their way to America where they built a life, a home, and a family in which the foundation was love and an understanding that family was always of the greatest importance. Edith was one of six children. She, along with her siblings, Alex and Hannah, Sylvia, Hyman, and Lee, all siblings of blessed memory. She grew up in Harlem, where they enjoyed a happy childhood. Edith would fondly recall visits to Coney Island and the boardwalk. She loved the time her family would take to travel away from the city to enjoy time relaxing at a farm. It was actually an Orthodox farm in New Jersey. Edith's father, Samuel, was a tailor who had his own little shop, and her mother, Molly, worked alongside her beloved Samuel. And Edith would share stories with her family members, stories of her father singing sweet love songs to her mother as they worked in the shop. And Sam, Samuel, sadly, became ill, quite ill, stricken with Parkinson's disease. And so in 1931, the entire family the Feldman family moved to Cleveland to be closer to the rest of their family. Tragically, when Samuel was just 42 years young, he passed. The children, in addition to attending school, they all helped out by taking on jobs once they were old enough. Now, Edith attended and then graduated from John Adams High School, and following her graduation, she went to work at a shoe store. But once the war began, Edith immediately signed up to take a test that would determine if she was able to join the War Department. Edith was more than able and far beyond capable, and so she was assigned to the position of chief clerk. With her shorthand and stenography skills, she became a very valued employee. In 1944, Edith met and then married Lionel Silverman. While this marriage ended in divorce, the union brought forth one of the brightest lights in Edith's life, her son Stephen. Stephen was not only blessed to have Edith as his mother, but Stephen was doubly blessed in growing up alongside of his Aunt Lee and her family as well. I'm told that Stephen's cousins were more like siblings, and Aunt Lee was always like a second mom to him. And Stephen was fortunate to have a mom who was unique and strong in so many ways. You see, Stephen's mom, Edith, was in a word, a trailblazer, and truly a woman who I believe was ahead of her time. Edith, always the astute businesswoman and always so very independent, she decided in 1959 to start a company with her sister, Lee. The business actually began in her kitchen. And its purpose was to supply law offices with temporary legal secretaries. As the, as the business was beginning to take off, attorneys would call, and they'd ask Edith or Lee for one of their Lee gals. Legals? Lee gals. And this is how the name started and stuck. And so Lee gals was born and was in business for over 30 years until 1993. 
Edith and her sister Lee had offices in Cleveland and Cincinnati. And in 1984, Lee Gals was honored when they were awarded the job of staffing all the personnel in the United States Pavilion at the World's Fair in Louisiana. Edith also supplied employees to NASA's Lewis Research Center. And she belonged to several business-related organizations and was even listed one year in the who's who of business owners. She was respected and trusted by her clients and her employees. I had a chance to speak with one of her employees, an employee who do, grew to be more like certainly a member of the family, sometimes a sister, sometimes a daughter, sometimes a niece, and always the closest friend. And this friend I'm talking about is Francine. Franny, you worked with Edith for more than 30 years. You described her to me as a gentle, loving soul. You said she was loved by her clients and her employees. And you described Edith as a woman who cared so much about all of these people, the ones she worked with, the ones she worked for, and that people felt at ease with Edith. When Edith's son Stephen died in 2013, we can only imagine this was such a deep and horrible loss for Edith and for her entire family. And this incredibly strong woman, somehow, somehow she found the strength. Maybe Amy and Michael, the strength she found to go on, maybe it was so that she could be strong for the two of you and for her six beautiful great-grandchildren. Michael, we had a chance to speak on the phone as you were coming into Cleveland yesterday, and you described so beautifully a woman to me, a woman who you said was the greatest sounding board. That's the first thing you said about your grandmother. Michael, you said whether the discussion was on life in general, the family, career choices, whatever the topic was, your Grammy was able to share great insight. And you knew that to her family, staying close and keeping in touch was of the utmost importance. This is what she shared with you. This is what she showed you. This is what she knows you and your sister will pass down to your generations to follow. That importance of Lador Vador from generation to generation, that importance of family. And Amy, when we spoke yesterday, you told me that your Grammy is somebody you would describe as the absolute matriarch of the family. You said she was our guide through life. She proved how much she loved you, and she also provided so much guidance. Amy, you also told me that people adored her, and they appreciated her honesty. Your Grammy was, without a doubt, truthful. She might tell you something you didn't want to hear, but you knew you would get a straight answer from her. She told it how it was. And while so many adored Edith, Edith loved and adored and cherished Michael and Amy and Kara and Nick. But I think it's very fair to say her absolute most precious treasures, her most delicious gems, are found in the smiles and faces of Madison and Maylee and Caleb and Mason and Mackenzie and just four weeks ago, little Sammy, Samuel Stephen, the little boy who carries the name of Edith's father, Samuel, and his own grandfather, Stephen. She was blessed with the dearest of friends. I know many of you are here. She had a great group of lady friends, ladies who like to lunch together, but ladies who were also treated as if they were family, and they were. They were your extended family. Edith was, throughout her entire life, an intellectual. She loved to study and keep up with politics and current events. She was a woman who loved words, and you better be careful if you went up against her in a game of Scrabble. She was a lady who we all can say when I grow up, I'd like to be like Edith, because up until the very last moment, this woman lived independently, always independent. 
She was a woman who we know was taught the importance of family and who passed that along to her generations. And while she will be missed so greatly, her presence and the light that shines forth from remembering her is a light that will always stay with her loved ones and be with them throughout their lives. We join with the sages of our people as we say, we pray that the memory of Edith Silverman always be for a blessing. Amen. Our tradition teaches us that words which come from our heart enter directly to our heart. And at this time, her grandchildren, Amy and Michael, have words from their heart that they wish to share with all of us. Hello. I think most of you know we're Edith's favorite grandchildren. <laughs> we wanted to thank you all for coming. Your presence here speaks volumes about the wonderful impact our grandmother had on all of us during her 93 years. Some of you know our grandmother as Edith, Edel, Aunt Edel, Grammy, Grammy Aunt Deedle, or Mom. She was referred by so many and loved fondly by so many. To us and her six great grandchildren, she was simply Grammy. And she was pretty terrific one at that. It's hard to put into words just how much Grammy helped us and so many others people become who we are today. In thinking through what to say about such an extraordinary woman, a few words come to mind that describe our grandmother and paint a picture of the woman we all knew and loved. Wise, considerate, caring, compassionate, determined, strong, and inspirational. Grammy was truly the matriarch of our family. She was a full she was full of wisdom and amazing sounding board for anything from life lessons to financial matters to family. When Amy and I think of Grammy, we think of the most astute, professional, and inspirational person who looked up to all of who we looked up to all of our lives. My brother and I often phoned our grandmother or sat down with her individually to gain her perspective. There have been countless times when we both reached out for all kinds of advice. She genuinely kept us grounded in what was important, family being at the top of that list. With Grammy, we always enjoyed family dinners, celebrated the Jewish holidays with family, and marked important milestones with our family. It was a, always a given that we would be at family events, bar and bat mitzvahs, weddings, and even funerals. We would all sit shiva together, and these events just brought us closer. One event in particular comes to mind when describing monumental family occasions. In 1988, our dear grandmother took it upon herself and our great aunt Lee to take the eldest four grandchildren, me, Amy, Nikki, and Jason, on a trip across the country to Vancouver and Alaska. And boy, were we a handful. I never heard them complain, but it could not have been easy, especially when we arrived in Alaska and had to depart for our cruise without a single piece of luggage. Our grandmother just laughed, proceeded to borrow clothes from the hotel owners, and referred to this leg of our journey as roughing it. Needless to say, we all had a blast. A dear friend described our grandmother as a strong leader. She was a fighter who persevered and never gave up on a challenge. Like Winston Churchill, she would never surrender until it was on her own terms. When Grammy made up her mind to pursue something, she would go all in. She poured her passion into her business and obviously has so much to success to show for it. Everywhere you look, you see awards, recognition, and acknowledgement of all the good our grandmother has done and the positive impact she has had on so many people. Grammy put the same passion into our family. Another example of this was, was our infamous family expedition to Israel. In 1995, Grammy and Aunt Lee took the entire extended family on a tour all over Israel. Try to imagine the entire Silverman clan coming together in Israel with Aunt Lee and Grammy at the helm, orchestrating a national lampoons type of vacation for our family. 
This trip really tested the bounds of our family closeness. But we all made it through in one piece, and thankfully we're even still speaking to each other at the end. <laughs> We know Grammy would appreciate all of the friends and family that came to pay tribute today. She would have enjoyed the cantor's beautiful voice and kind words, and she would be so proud to see us all here together. Lives of great men all remind us we can make our lives sublime and departing leave behind us footprints in the sand of time. This excerpt from the poem, A Psalm of Life by Longfellow, seems to portray our grandmother's life and legacy. So many things will continue to remind us of our grandmother long after today. We will remember the footprints that Grammy left on the sands of time that we had with her. We feel blessed that we had so many opportunities to talk with her before she passed, but there are still things we wish we had had a chance to say. Most of all, I would, I would like to tell her that we all will be okay, that we'll carry on in her footsteps, and that faith and family matter most, and that we all strive to make her proud. Wise, considerate, caring, compassion, compassionate, determined, strong, inspirational. As our grandmother, she had just the right dose of each of these traits, and we're all a little better to have had her in our lives. It's so hard to think she's gone, and there will never be another great talk or another spirited Scrabble game with her or a story from our family's archives again. We love you, Grammy. We miss you already. You will always be alive and remembered in our thoughts, our actions, and all your amazing traits that we pass along to our children. Thank you. this moment, we ask God to accept Edith's soul as we rise for El Mole Rachamim, the memorial prayer. El Mole Rachamim, Shochin Bam Romim, Am Simen Ochanechona, Tachat Anfei Chashchina, Bimalohut Kedoshim Utorim, Ki zohar arakia masirim, et nihishmat idu bat shmuel, shahalacha le olama began eden te hemenu chata. Anna baharachamim astirecha, viseter gnafecha le lamim, viti tor vitor aracha imet nishmata, adonai huna chalata, vitanuach vishalom. Al Nishkavo Vinomar. Amen. O merciful God who dwells on high, who is full of compassion, grant perfect rest beneath the shelter of your divine presence among the holy and pure who shine as the brightness of the firmament. To our dear departed Edith Silverman, who has gone now to her eternal home, may her soul be bound up in the bonds of eternal life. Grant that her memory inspire all of us to noble and consecrated living. And to this we can say, Amen. Please be seated. Friends, as we depart from the funeral home, our, our service will continue at the Knollwood Cemetery. And following the interment, uh, the family will receive visitors, I believe, at the reception area at Woodhawk. They'll be there to receive visitors immediately following the internment. Also, we want to just announce that anyone who wishes perhaps to make a contribution in memory of Edith, the family has suggested that you might consider either Belfair JCB, the Smile Train, or the Special Olympics three charities that were very near and dear to Edith's heart. On behalf of her entire family, we thank you for being here on this important day.